Hello everyone and welcome back to Technically Unsure, where I'm not really sure what I'm doing technically. Well then, it's hacking time. So today I want to try something. First, uh, the, the project depends on uh, whether or not the PoE I bought is actually going to work. I'm going to unbox everything in front of the camera and then we're going to try to do it together. This is a Raspberry Pi brand new. I just want to try something. These are the stuff and I have some more. I bought from AliExpress, well, which is the MCU zone. We actually reviewed uh, their carrier board for CM4, Compute Module 4. That turned out to be great and it's working and it's perfect. Man, no issues with that. So I, I ordered a bunch, nothing is sponsored. I just, I wanna do it on my own. I just wanna try something. So I got a bunch of PoE with heatsink, apparently, for Raspberry Pi 5, depending on how good it is and what works and what does not, I want to try something. So this is not for this job, but I got it anyway. Okay, I got this one. It, yeah, as I expected, allows you to connect an SSD. FPC cable is here and GPIO pins come back here and it should power the board okay we're gonna try that's number one and the heat sink is for raspberry pi i would rather go with that so let me see what is the difference so i i, I bought everything but i just want to know what is the difference i have it what is what on the camera so let me just open it and see what is the main difference by the way i bought this a while ago so sorry if i'm not remembering all right so this one is same it's just this one doesn't come with a heat sink i guess that's the difference i guess these two are also the same oh so this is just like the other one the active cooler okay this one i don't even need to open it i can see it from here it's exactly the same thing okay and this one yeah it is same thing okay so this uh, i just want to take one of these so I am going to connect this to Raspberry Pi, try to power it using an Ethernet cable. And if it works, I want to add something else to it and give it a shot. I would rather go with the one I have this one. I, I mean, this looks okay. Yeah, this looks okay. You know what? I have already tried that many times. I just want to try the MCU's on one, the new one. That one, I already know how it goes, so let's see. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, I don't have time for that. This is this is much more easier and smoother. There you go. You just remove it, tap, and put it in there. That just It just makes that click noise, and it, it's over. Okay, anyway, this thing, okay, I removed it. Now, I always forget, is it this way? Yep, it is this way. Let me remove this. On there. There you go, see? That's why I don't have time for the other one. It's just, uh, yeah, this is two seconds. Finish, that's it. Anyway, so if we put it this way and connect this PoE connector over there, just wanna make sure I'm not bending anything, okay? Okay, that was easy. And finally, this FPC connector, open that up. This part is always a little bit tricky. Uh, there is nothing we can do about it. It is what it is. Okay, I might not be able to do it in front of camera. Okay, so the trick is basically you have to put the cable first, then the PoE header inserted. Okay, so that part is done. Uh, I just wanna do a very quick test with the cable. Let me see if just it powers on and then uh, I will prepare everything else. So let's see where are the lights so we can see on the camera. Oh, there you go. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, so PoE header works. I will prepare an OS image and uh, I will be right back with something else. Okay, so we are back and look at that. So there is not, no power, okay? I just the ethernet cable and uh, this is, I'm gonna talk about it now. And there is a keyboard connection and the HDMI so you guys can see what's happening, okay? No power connection, nothing else, all right? So here is the deal. What I want to build here, probably already saw it in the YouTube title, video title, 
I'm trying to build an Ethernet tap. So you know how you go to, let's say, the, the dentist's office and you see the uh, person sitting behind the front desk, their, their, their computer is sitting right there. You get the urge, you know, take out their Ethernet cable and plug it into your tap and then plug it back in so you can sniff every all the traffic and all the network activities. No? It's just me? Okay. I'm gonna have to go into hardcore hacking mode. Uh, I might have some issues, but yes, the point is I want to show you how with no power, right? So remember, if you do that in the dentist's office or any office, so if you do that in there, the supposed office or the target should have a PoE. If you don't, if they don't, then uh, yeah, you, you probably need to also find a way to power your board. But let's just assume they are using one of those enterprise switches with PoE then you literally just have to hide this. Obviously, none of the cables are required except this, which you can make a, find a shorter one, make this shorter or tuck it down under. You don't really need anything other than this is the ethernet cable coming from the front desk, uh, you know, the whatever, your target, whoever it is. So this is the ethernet that was going to their computer. You plug that in now into your Raspberry Pi. You need a short ethernet cable from here to their computer. Every single connection will come here, hit the Raspberry Pi and very seamlessly go out and hit, hit their computer. So their computer and everything will absolutely see no difference uh, where in the middle in here in Raspberry Pi, you will be able to tap and sniff all the data that's being sent and received, okay? Now let's look at the computer. So I, I actually stole this code, so I'm gonna credit the person who wrote this. It's a bash script. It actually sets up a tab. It's nothing really complicated. It's very small, but let's take a look at it. So let me open it in genie tap.sh, okay? So yeah, this is the code. So you need two devices, ETH0 and ETH1. Okay, so ETH1, an original one that's on the Raspberry Pi is ETH0, okay? Let's look at it, ETH0 is this one already connected and does have a connection. And this one, that is not connected yet. So we're gonna come to that. And then it basically, uh, you set up the old interfaces if there's any, and then every time you wanna run it again, it's, it uses the TC to create a tap device and mirrors connection coming, anything coming to tap A, tap A is your ETH, ETH zero, and forwards it to tap B, and vice versa. From tap B, whatever is ingress, it forwards it to tap A. And then also we disable IPv6, we don't need any of those packages, packets, and then we put both into promiscuous mode, which is, uh, you know, uh, allows it to just accept everything. Like when you wanna do wireless sniffing, you also have to do that, so yeah. We put uh, the, both of these, we mirror the ports, everything coming in goes out and vice versa. Okay, literally it. There is nothing else. I didn't even install any packages. These are all Linux commands. The TC, the IP, the CCTL, that's all three commands that's used in this bash. And all of them are already built into the OS. So I didn't do any of that. So uh, that being said, what I'm gonna do is in one terminal, okay? I am going to run the tap.sh and look, this ethernet cable, I'm gonna connect this to the computer that I'm, that's right there, I'm recording this video from, right? The, my capture card is connected to. So that's going to be our victim, okay? So we're gonna use that as a victim and try to tap into the connection. So I'm gonna run the tap.sh and then I'm going to put this in there and I am going to turn on the Wireshark, okay? Now, if we go to my computer, okay, let's put this on any. There you go, <laughs> it all, oh my God, it already started capturing everything, okay? There you go, so let's go to my computer, okay? So this is, where is it, full screen, okay? So this is my computer, and uh, yeah, as you can see in the network connections, okay? If I open this up, you will see that I already have the internet connection 
and it is it was the same IP as before. I, it, it nothing changed. It is exactly as it was before for me. So if I do something like uh, if I search for test, test will work. Everything will work. Absolutely no problem whatsoever. So if I want to show you like a specific i have to i want to make a dns query for something super specific that doesn't happen already in the background i i guess we can do technically unsure.com which doesn't exist right i just want to make a dns query so we can go back to the wireshark and see if we can see this over there okay obviously it doesn't work now let's go to my raspberry pi okay Oh my God, so this is going very fast. I'm gonna stop it for a second. Okay, so let's search for a string. Uh, what did I enter? Technically unsure, right? So technically unsure, let's search. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so here is my DNS query lookup, which obviously failed. So yeah, right now, as, as I'm recording this video and as it is going forward, I have actual tab list uh, sitting on here and in my computer that is recording this very video, all my computer's traffic is going through Raspberry Pi and potentially I could have been recording this. So I just wanted to show you and uh, Mac address wise and stuff like that, it is so smooth. You, you, you shouldn't really, the, the target computer shouldn't really notice uh, that there is a big difference other than disconnection and connection. Now you might want to say, okay, what is the big deal? You know, everything is SSL, everything is encrypted. Cool. It is correct. And uh, you are right. Uh, but it is something I just wanted to show you. And plus, if your target is not really tech savvy or cybersecurity savvy and doesn't understand, you know, error messages and when they try to access certain sites and if it is erroring out, they don't really pay attention and click on the proceed and go, go next. And when SSL warning error shows up, you can use SSL proxy, man in the middle proxy. There are a lot of tools out there in the Kali Linux. Yeah, so there are a lot of tools out there that you can install in, in this and uh, try to do SSL man in the middle. Alternatively, uh, you can say, you know, uh, this device is connected now my code my Raspberry Pi is in the network right so you can say okay I can leave that device there and from that computer do a reconnaissance in the network and do stuff in the network seamlessly <clears throat> and you can make this device connect back to you you can run something like ng rock or uh, you know SSH reverse proxy Cloudflare you a lot of ways that this will make a connection to you and then you will be able to connect to, via that reverse SSH, connect to this device and from there get access to the network and much more capabilities and possibilities. I just wanted to show you, right, with a PoE and a right tool and, and easily with a Raspberry Pi, which is already overkill, it's so fast. And, uh, you know, you, you will be able to do a lot of stuff. And also because it does have SSD, you don't even have to worry about the storage. <laughs> you want to, let's say, let's say you don't want any any traffic you don't want to store everything uh, you know somewhere sorry upload everything somewhere so what you can do is you can put an ssd i don't know 128 gigabytes 256 gigabyte so half a terabyte whatever you put an ssd in here and then leave it there come back i guess i don't know one week later pick your the you know raspberry pi and access the data it's just something uh, interesting uh, it was for me I wanted to see if it is possible that's all and it is possible and uh, this thing is like 25 bucks whatever I bought it off Amazon this had uh, same thing 20 bucks from Aliexpress and that's it so this is the victim's computer uh, going to victim's computer and this is the actual connection coming from the router that's all you need. You don't need the USB cable and keyboard. You don't need the HDMI. Yeah, so literally I can remove all these and that's that's all you need. So you can make this cable also very short. So you don't really, uh, you can hide it somewhere maybe. Yeah, I just wanted to show you and uh, that what is possible. All right, thanks for watching. And if you have any suggestions, ideas, fun ideas and things you can do with this, let me know down below. Thanks for watching and uh, I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.